Hey guys, it's Larry from Northern Coast, May 12th, and I'm going to do my first update here. And from the front there, that's my Cracky, my DWC with air, and my Compost T hydroponics there on, on the very end there. But look at the growth. Holy cow, uh, last couple of weeks these things have finally really took off here, so I'm going to come in for a closer look. Here's the Cracky one, and uh, it's looking really good. And, and if you're looking, it's actually growing just a little bit higher than the rest, but I don't know if that means too much right now, but uh, not experiencing any problems with the leaves. I'm going to take a look at the roots here. The roots look really good, nice and white. And I don't know if you can see the water, but it looks almost stagnant there. And I've debated over and over, should I just let it right out? And Sorry about that, it was one of my kids. Um, I debated whether to let this ride out and let the water drop down a little bit more. Um, so basically, I'm just going to let it ride out for another week or so. I'm going to keep a close eye on it. And if uh, the plant starts showing any problems, I'm going to uh, change out the water. But so far, I mean, look at these roots. They look perfect. Look really, really good. Water doesn't look so good. And the only thing I do is about. Um, Probably once a week, I uh, I just take a stick and I steer the, the nutrients around a little bit. But other than that, no air, and it's looking really good. All right, this is my normal DWC with air. And uh, out of these three, I figured this one would have really took off compared to compared to the rest of them. So let's take a look at the roots here. And the same thing, um, I had really slow growth the first two weeks. And then uh, these last two weeks, uh, it's really starting to take off. But water looks good, nice, good bubbles. And I really thought this would out outperform the rest. But I mean, look at those roots. A little bit of browning there. Um, but we're getting ready to change the water. All right, here's my compost tea one, and it's looking really good, really good. I haven't noticed any problems. Leaves look really good. And let's take a look at the roots here. You got a little bit of brown there. You can see that? But uh, so far, so good. And uh, no smell. Out of these three systems, this one's been, uh, I've had to top this off a lot more often. The other two, I haven't topped off at all. But for some reason, this compost tea is really going through the water. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why. Um, I have a little um, aquarium pH test thing. It only goes down to 6.0. But the pH here is running at 7.5. And I'm not, that's definitely not the, what you're shooting for, but I'm getting good growth. So there's not really much I can do with it. I don't really want to add any pH down. I kind of want to see how, how this thing will turn out. But no smell. I don't notice any smell at all. And this is this year. This is what I've been using for the, the compost tea. I just got some uh, rabbit turds here, and this is really composted down steer manure. And I actually put it in this um, about a week before I'm, I'm going to do a water change. I'll put it in this bowl, let it sit out in the sun, and let it get nice and dry. And I think that's helped keep down the um, the smell. Last year I was using worm castings, and if I didn't change the water every week. I had uh, one heck of a bad smell. So I let these run for or, uh, two weeks, no smell, and it seems to be doing the trick here. So we'll see uh, what happens in the next few weeks here. All right, about a month ago, I had a, uh, I made a little video on the. Uh, I started these three tomatoes and seed starter all at the same time, and then I started one in rock wool, and we're going to take closer look. I mean, this thing is huge compared to these other three. I mean, look at that thing. This is a Stilettes Determinant. They're all the same tomato. And uh, the only thing I come up with, I'm not saying it's necessarily better to start off with hydroponics, but I think when I transplanted the, um, the other three buckets, I, when, I was rinsing, when I was rinsing the soil off the roots, I think that might have put them in shock for a little bit. Because, um, 
the first two weeks with the other three, it was really slow growth, very slow. So I think they overcame the shock. I mean, that, that's just my thinking. I, I don't know. So look at that. I already got my first tomato. So one of the lessons I learned is if I'm going to do hydro, I'm going to go ahead and start them in rock wool. That seems to seems to get a little better results there. But man, look at this thing. I struggle year to year to grow tomatoes, and for me, um, this is the easiest way to go. All right, I'm gonna show you how I do a water change. So hang in there. Last year when I did my water change, I would actually have to lift the the lid up slide the old bucket out, slide a new bucket in, and it was a pretty much a two-person job. And I was watching a video, I think it's Outdoor Hydroponics, and he had a little uh, video on his uh, tonics pump. So like, hey, that's a pretty good idea. So, all right. So I bought one, I, was, I think it was right around 25 bucks, and I covered the shipping. So I'm gonna show you how, how good this thing works out. All right, this is what, this is why I went with the, the six inch net pot here so I could slide this over a little bit just like that put in my ponics pump sorry guys trying this one hand alright Henry I got my son help me here alright in the bucket bud there we go and this makes the water change real nice and easy so you got more than a, a couple buckets I've I'd recommend getting one of these. It uh, runs off two AA batteries and uh, works pretty good. I'm really happy with this. Makes the water change a lot easier, and the kids like to play with the play with the thing too. So, keep it down there. Right, good job. All right, this is the normal DWC air with regular nutrient. And when I was doing my water change, I actually noticed that the roots were a little bit more browner than I thought. Um, last time I added three scoops into the water, so I'm, maybe it's a little bit too hot. And maybe I might have to do a little bit more water change on this one. So this time around, I'm going to do one scoop of the Maxi Pro and one scoop of the Maxi Bloom. Here we go. Here. So I'm just using a 10 by 14 for the Maxi Pro. And then the maxi bloom at 5, 10, 14. So I'm not too sure what happened there. I'm going to take a little bit closer look at the, uh, the cracky. But they're the exact same nutrient levels. And I don't see any browning here on the cracky. The, the cracky uh, roots look really healthy. And instead of having a longer one, really long, like taproot looking thing, these are all kind of uh, almost equal length. So that was. Kind of interesting there. Let's get back a little bit. I'm gonna swing you guys all over. Sorry guys. One thing I forgot to mention was when I first transplanted this into that DWC, uh, the five gallon bucket, I had some of this uh, Tiger Bloom from Fox Farms left over. And I used it last year on my uh, strawberries and I didn't notice anything, no differences. I didn't really notice much of a difference for using this stuff. So I wanted to try out, so um, when I first transplanted this, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm a, I have a brain fart there. I went straight to this Tiger Bloom. And this tomato seemed to really like it. And all it is is 284. I'm just using it as normal strength. But I thought that was a little bit interesting that the tomato did extremely well with just going straight to the bloom. I used, um, almost no no grow with it other than uh, when I first got it going. Alright, I just refilled my compost tea and uh, I refilled this bucket with water from my aquarium and I've had this sock here soaking for about 15 minutes and the final thing I do is I, I just squeeze it really hard try to get as much as I can in there. Um, There's only about a handful of the composted uh, rabbit and uh, steer manure. Alright, and there we go. And one thing I've noticed, after about three days, these bubbles actually go away. And I also want to bring up another point is I do not add any molasses or corn syrup 
to this. And my concern was I didn't want that syrup sugary on the roots. I, was, uh, I thought that might be a problem. But uh, I don't have it. I'm going to take a closer look here at the top. All right, here's the DWC. Notice it's nice and green. And this one's a little bit lighter. And this is what um, my concern was. Last year, I grew a cherry tomato in this compost tea setup. And I had some issues with yellow, yellowing of the leaves. And I had a viewer um, give me a tip, said um, try bat iguana. I hope I'm saying that right. But uh, basically what I'm thinking is if, if I start seeing uh, a lot of yellowing of the leaves, I might uh, start adding some of the bat droppings there. Alright guys, sorry about the air pump noise, but uh, I didn't want to turn it off. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or uh, helpful suggestions, uh, just drop them down below and uh, I'll do an update in a month and uh, hopefully we'll have some tomatoes growing. Alright guys, take care.